Want to win money on sports? With Underdog, you can up to a 1,000 times your cash just by picking higher or lower on your favorite player's stats. Millions of fans have won billions of dollars on Underdog. Will you be next? Download the Underdog app and sign up to get a free pick with your first cash entry up to a $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama, Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783 or text NEXTSTEP to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny four six seven three six nine. This is the Weekly Scramble. A place where we chat about life over a cold one or two. It's time to belly up to the pod with Mike Fratelloni and your host, Chris Reavers. Well, looky here. It's a Tuesday, and that means it's time for the Weekly Scramble, and that means it's me. Hi, Chris Reavers, and that's Mike Fratelloni with Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores. Hello, Michael. How you doing, Reavers? I'm good. I'm good. Um, this is two weeks in a row. Look at us. Yeah, well, we always do the show. I know, I'm it's, kidding. You know, we've done a lot of weeks in the row in the past. You just are a traveler. I'm just sitting here working. I know. Look at me. Yeah, you're like a world traveler. Well, we were actually in discussion, uh, that being uh, the one that runs my house, and I'm the one that runs around my house, copyright Sam Cassell, back in the uh, mid-early 2000s. But she says, oh, 4th of July. I said, no, 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 no. No. No, 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 no. We're good. We ain't going nowhere for 4th of July. Isn't that a shame? I mean, America you know what, needs though? your... But you know what? He, yes, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. But also, we have also n- not stayed home for mm-hmm. the 4th of July in a long time. I assume you have... You live in an area with some young kids around there. Yes, and that I want to experience my new town. I've lived there just over a sure. year. I want to experience that for the 4th of could July. Could you be the guy who invests in some M80s? And blow some Perhaps. fingers off. I mean, you could do some something really cool. I may or may not be a guy who bought some driving in one of my trips across the country really? and back. And I they've been sitting in my garage for over a year now. Oh, you're kidding. Your yeah, kids I don't. In, I bought them in Ohio couple, like about a year ago. They're not fascinated by like, what are those, Dad? Well, th- so here's what's cool. So the house that we purchased, inside of it, they had really, really nice handmade uh, cabinets inside the garage. Oh, nice. And I, when I saw those, when we first looked at the house, I thought, well, they're going to take those. So sure. I didn't even expect them to be there oh, okay. once we closed on the house. But then we did the walkthrough. And they were still there. And they were still there. And I went, oh. well, wait, what? What? And I'm thinking, well, they're going to they're gonna take those out. But no, they, they were left behind. So sure. I thought, sweet. I get to... Anyway, so yeah, they've been sitting in there. That's why the kids haven't Okay, so I, I bought a house, you know, last year sometime, right? And and it was a, a single old guy owned this house. And it has a little gym in it. And it had like a ton of workout equipment. I mean, a ton. Like a treadmill, a stair stepper, nice. like a full bench press machine. I mean, like a bunch of it. Yep. And I said, the, the realtor said, hey, he wants like 10,000 bucks for all that stuff. And I said, you know, no. Like I, I, you know, it's, it's all used equipment, right? Mm-hmm, N- mm-hmm. It never sells for 10,000 bucks. And I said, you know, tell him if he'd like to leave it there, that's fine. We'll take care of it. And if he doesn't, I, I get it. You know, he can take it out. If sure, he needs to. Sure. And I was 99% sure that he was going to leave it there. Right. Because yes. why wouldn't he? He's, he's got to move it. He's moving into a condo because he's, you know, he's in kind of the, 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 the dusk of his life. Right. He doesn't need these, this exercise equipment. So, and I actually saw it up on Craigslist. He was like wanting like 20,000 bucks for all of it on Craigslist. I'm like, well, I know he's not selling it for 20,000 bucks. He just, he didn't understand the value of it. So we get to the house, do our final walkthrough. I walk down there. Everything is gone. No. Every single, he had a tanning bed. I mean, everything was gone. I thought, did he just out of spite spend the time to get someone to come and take it all out? Even though I said, just go ahead and leave it. Like I don't want it. But if you don't want it, just go ahead and leave it. it. Yeah, I don't care. Although he did leave a ping pong table. Oh, that's cool. And it's a really nice ping pong table. It's something I would not have purchased. Right. I I wouldn't like if my kids said you want a ping pong table, I'd say, go throw a ball outside. We're not you right, don't need a big right, right. but it's it's great. And but now it, that you have it, you love it. And now it. I have it. Yeah. Now we use it kind of all the time. And it is funny because I do play a lot of ping pong with my daughters, and they are exceptionally good at ping pong. And we do like uh, this kind of. Do you know what King of the Hill is? Like oh, you sure. play like three yeah. things, and yeah. uh, so you always and 
I'll not be king for half the time. Oh boy, which is a little frustrating because I fancy myself a ponger, right? I'm <laughs> a ping ponger. I mean, I, and so it is kind of fun watching my girls like get really aggressive till one of my children threw the ping pong paddle. Oh, no, you can't do that. And I was like, what? Whoa. What color is this guy in your world that you think you can lose your mind and throw a paddle in the basement? Didn't hit anything, luckily, because I would have still. Oh, woof. You know, uh, I, I wasn't planning on bringing this up, but you uh, uh, sparked my memory of something that was discussed earlier on the uh, the Garage Logic podcast mm-hmm. um, held in this very studio. Yeah, right here. And I don't know if you're aware of this. I assume you are because you're on top of a lot of things, uh, money related, business oh, oh, related. No. Okay, yeah. No, shoot. no, no. Okay. I need to see your reaction. Okay, are you ready it. for this? Because I'm, I'm almost positive you're aware of this, so I know I'm not pulling something out of left field mm. on you. <clears throat> The new Biden administration mortgage rules that could increase fees for borrowers with good credit in order to offset costs for less qualified buyers went into effect Monday. And they have spawned memories of the 2008 financial crisis that was ignited in large part by the collapse of subprime mortgages. It's it's weird. It's weird that we would incentivize people who can't... To have okay. piss poor credit. Well, it, it, it's not <laughs> a blessing to have someone get into a mortgage if they can't afford it. Right? No. It's just not a blessing. You're doing them a disservice, you not are. a service. Yes. And what a shame, right? What a shame. And But I, did, I do think this is a very visual example of a progressive tax code because... We pay, or I'm not going to say we, I'm going to just, let's say, a, a person that, mm-hmm. that makes money mm-hmm. already pays taxes for people who don't make money. Yep. There's already, that's already built in. This is a very visual thing, though, because they're saying, if you're good with money, if you have money, if you have a 20% down payment, you have to pay extra. And if you don't have all those things, you get to, to benefit from a lower interest rate, right? Yep. Yep. And it's... Super clear for people to see because every month on their mortgage statement, they'll see a Biden charge of $72 or $44, whatever it is. And so they're going to look for every single month they have that mortgage. And as long as this stands, and I don't actually know if it's going to stand. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, it's been met with a lot of criticism, uh, thankfully, on both sides. A of lot the of aisle. criticism on, yes. on both sides. But I don't know what the issue is. I, I am not for it because I'm not for it because... I'm not against charging the the higher income people more. That's not what I'm not against. What I'm against is you're not doing somebody a service. It's not a blessing no. to make someone barely afford a house. And I know homeownership is very important, right? I get that. Yep. But the easiest way to develop wealth. It, it, it it's a it's a way to develop wealth, right? But if you don't have money, it's not a way to develop wealth. It's a way Correct. to yep. oh crap, I can't afford this house. Why did I do this? What I now I'm really pinning myself in. I can't afford all this other stuff, maybe day to day stuff. And it's just a shame. But being so visual, people can see this and they're losing their minds. Mm-hmm. Rightfully so, right? But our tax code is doing just the same thing. Right. When Joe Suchere writes these huge tax checks <laughs> and he's paying, you know, on, well, you got to look at it this way. State of Minnesota, roughly half the people don't pay taxes in the state of Minnesota. Right. Oh, I was not aware so, of that. So, yeah, what, yeah. Five million people. Yep. So if you pay a dollar in tax, you're paying the equivalent of two and a half million people. Right. So you're like, OK, wait, I'm already paying more than two and a half million people in Minnesota if I pay one dollar in tax. But if you really get to the top end of the tax code, you're paying the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of more people. I mean, it's already it's it's but it's so obscure and so, you know, convoluted that you just don't get it. But this this little thing on mortgages is pissing people off. <laughs> I have a nephew who. He and his beautiful wife just buying their first house, nice. They're buying it out by you, you know, not not in Carver, but I called you uh, Chan, buying it in oh, Chan nice. Hansen, right? Nice. And I told you you knew where it That's was. That's where I bought my first house. That's right, and yep. they're and they're doing it, and it's it's an expensive house. They have good jobs, right? They have good jobs, and it's an expensive house. And I think it's seventy two dollars a month right now from here on that they have to spend to to help someone else afford their mortgage. It's just, and it's, and you know, we and, live in freaking backwards. Yeah. Town. My nephew's super conservative, right? Super, so conservative that he has a bunch of money in the bank, but won't invest it. Right. Cause right. he's like, I'm not letting that go. Don't know right? what happens. Right? I, I, nothing yep. can happen, but he's built this big nest egg and he's besides himself. He's like seven. Cause that's like someone stealing 72 bucks from him. I'm like, Absolutely. I'm like, what do you think's happening when you were paying taxes, dude? Like the taxes are doing the exact same thing. <laughs> you just, you just don't know the person you're, you're that to. uncle. I yeah. see. You're that I know. uncle. I, I feel bad. I, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I mean, I know it's already in, it's already a, a rule, but I think many States, I think as of today, States were filing suit 
over it, I, yes. I believe. I, bl- I think it was, Joe said it, was it 26? I can't remember. Yeah, like the literally number. half the state said, oh, and, we're not doing that. And I know, surprisingly, uh, we were not, we being the state of Minnesota, we were not on that list. No, we were not one of them. We're, we're in no. favor. You know what we're more concerned with? What's that? Cannabis. Oh? Yeah, did you know that? I, did well, you hear that? We passed. We passed legislation. legislation. Was that last week? Yeah, last, last Thursday, Friday, yeah, Friday, Friday, whatever it was? Tell me more. Okay, I just have a quiz for you. This is a little quiz. And, you know, we were the craft beer show. I'm going to give you a little hint, craft beer. We were the craft beer show. So out of all these industries, craft beer, eggs, chocolate, and cannabis. Okay, one more time. Craft beer, craft beer eggs, eggs, chocolate, which is a huge industry, sure. and cannabis. Okay. Which one has the highest retail sales projected in 2023? Well, those are four extremely popular items. Eggs. Let's see. Hold on. Craft beer, chocolate, and cannabis. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the math this okay. way. Okay. Not everybody's old enough to drink craft beer. True. Not everybody's old enough for cannabis. True. Everybody's old enough for eggs and chocolate. Yes. I would say it's got to be one of the digestible products that is eligible for everyone to consume. Eggs is probably not as popular as chocolate because chocolate is loved by everybody. True. I would go with chocolate. Okay. Um, no. But good guess. Okay. Your reasoning was I super use great. logic. I use a little logic. So cannabis retail sales are to surpass thirty three and a half billion dollars. Holy crap. Thirty three and a half billion in twenty twenty three alone. That's just oh, legal this is cannabis. a projection. This is a projection, but it's gonna hit it. It did sure. twenty million okay. twenty billion last year. Okay. Um that's just Legal cannabis, only legal cannabis. Wow. The craft beer industry is roughly $12 billion, so it's almost three times bigger than craft beer. Now, some have suggested, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that because of the legalization of cannabis mm-hmm. in certain parts of this country has led to somewhat of a decline in alcohol consumption. I don't know if that's right. I, I thought 100% I read, think that's true. I, I thought right? I read that somewhere. I, yeah. Well, you know, okay. you're too high to get up and get yourself a next beer. Well, but no, you know, everyone's got a vice and maybe they've just switched their vice because this product wasn't legal 12 months ago you know or, or even was, 12 days ago. And when I was um, doing all my show prep, yep. <laughs> I read a story about, well, one thing that was happening and I was doing show prep from my office computer, right? Okay. And I went to a story and it said like, uh, not a 404 came, error came up, you know that sometimes when you're going yep. to a website, there's yep. an error. Yep. And then I, I, I kind of looked again, I bopped back out and tried to go back in. I did not know that I have a filter on my computer at my office. Huh. That says you can't look up stories about cannabis, and I'm like, huh? I would, I did not know that, really? right? Because at, when I was, you know, back before when Fratelloni's owned it, right? When yeah. before we were purchased, I guess I would look up anything on my computer. I just never you- <laughs> thought of it. It was just my computer, and so and and it did take. I mean, it's been what 16, 17 months, and it took me a long time to bump into something that I couldn't see. Okay, right, sure. And and really, it wasn't the story because it was a Fortune magazine story, but it, there was like a tie-in in the link to buy cannabis or something. So uh. that's why they stopped us. Um, but I thought that was really kind of funny. So in this story, they were talking about how in Colorado that cannabis sales are actually down in 2023. Why is that? Because they think during COVID, people just stayed home and got high. But that kind of makes me feel a little bit good because that because I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe this isn't going to be just a free-for-all and everybody's just going to get high all day long every day. But is that a <clears> – <throat> so that's a dip relative the last 24 to 48 months worth of production. Yes. Right? Not yep. Not – Okay, in 1999, it was zero. Yeah, yeah. yes. Well, legally, yeah. legally, yeah, this, anyway. This is an 8% dip from last year. Got right? it. Right, okay. 8% okay. dip from last year. Gotcha. And, you know, last year was a big year because we were still in COVID and so on. Sure. But um, it, it, it it hardened me just a little bit because I, I had that feeling, you know, when I look at my sweet kids, and I think, I don't want you smoking pot. I just don't want you doing it. Sure. Right? I just don't think it's the right thing for you to do. I don't think people are the best sell, uh, best selves when they're high. I have to share a funny story okay. when you're when but, you're done. But you see please. where I'm going. Yeah. And and so I thought I don't want this just to become legal in Minnesota and then just everybody's high all the time. But to see that Colorado had a pullback, meaning it just wasn't as big as it was the year before, made me think, okay, this is finite. It's not just infinite growth in the pot business. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, 
I'm a I'm a pretty much a live and let live guy. Yeah. I well, here's my inhaler. I I, I can't mm. smoke anything. No, but <laughs> so, you could chew the gummies. Well, I could. Yeah, yeah. but so I'm not a I'm not a candidate for certain. And I just. I just choose not to. Yeah. But I. But if you want to, you, Mike, you or it. you whoever, yeah. yeah, absolutely, knock yeah. yourself out. If you're legal, you have the money. Go ahead. Do you it. do. You yeah. do. You. So my son, I, I can't remember if I have shared this this with you or not. I don't even think it'd be possible because I think this was after we did the show last week. So my son had to come with me to to work one day. I think it was last week, and uh, he just he comes in here, does his homework, mm-hmm. sits in there. In fact, the, the the twins are playing a day game, so we had the twins game on. Yeah. He was in heaven. He, he didn't care. He, he didn't yeah. care. So he didn't have to listen to all the bad words that Uncle Joe had to sure. say during and before and after the show. So he sat in here, and then we we get our stuff done and uh, get all my things done, and off we head back home, right? And so this was the first time he had been to Minneapolis in a long time, okay? You know, because you know where we live and where he goes to school yeah, and where we nowhere close. Huh? No, yeah, we never go through the city anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but even though I come here every day, so he w- we we took a, a certain route where we drove by a uh, homeless encampment oh. um, to get home, and and he stared at that because obviously that's unusual. That's sure. something that is out of uh, out. Of, it's not normal. Yeah, it, it's definitely. Should not be normalized. Right. I guess. Okay. Yep. So he he sees that, and of course he's a very inquisitive kid, and he harmlessly asks, "Hey, Dad, what's that?" And I said, "Well, what do you think it is, buddy?" And he said, "Well, it looks like a bunch of tents. To you know, is that a?" Not, he didn't say is it a campground. He goes, "Well, what is it?" And I said, "Well, you know, there's people that are homeless, you know, and uh, without getting into mm-hmm. it." And I said, mm-hmm. "Well, there's people that are homeless, bud. So uh, unfortunately, that's that's kind of where they live, uh, is you know, right off the street." And this is where the Chris Reaver School of Parenting oh, oh no. really takes oh, off. No. <laughs> and so then he he just kind of goes, huh. He just sits there, and I can tell he's thinking about it. And then, of course, the question comes up. And, and I love having open dialogue with my mm. kids. I, I It's my favorite part of the day because we do it to, to school every single morning. Yeah. It's fantastic because I love listening to where their minds go, right? Mm. And so then he goes, huh, well, wh- why is that? And I thought, okay. I can go one of two directions yeah, here. You could red pill him right now. I could, yeah, you know? exactly. I could say, well, here, here's exactly why. Mm-hmm. And I and I thought, you know what? He's now 11. Mm-hmm. This is probably the good opportunity to, you know, we, we he and I have had some big boy conversations. Yeah, yeah. And so I'll say, well, bud, you know, sometimes life takes turns on you. And sometimes, you know, you, you may or may not make good decisions. Um, sometimes you can't, it's not really your fault, yeah, but you just end up on hard illness, times. Yeah, yeah. And I said, it all starts with smoking. <laughs> oh, did you really do oh, that? Yeah, oh gosh. <laughs> it's smoking's the gateway drug that gets you to live in a tent. Oh, that poor kid. And I just went out of both. Oh, no. But I started there. That poor kid. <laughs> And I could just in the rearview mirror, because he would be sitting in the in the in the seat behind me, and I could see his eyes like just get bigger and bigger. And I thought, yeah, that'll. He's gonna see one of his teachers standing outside <laughs> smoking a heater because he just dealt with forty little brats during gym class. He's gonna be having a just a, a, a one little dart outside. Mrs. And Smith, he's say, no! Why would you do I that? I don't want you to live in a tent. In a tent down in Minneapolis. <laughs> that is funny. You can only play that. Do play it now because in twelve years old, thirteen years old. I mean, kids get pregnant at thirteen. I'm gonna that tell you. Does it I mean, not boys, Mike. not boys. Well, but, not yet. Yeah, not yet. Wait well, till this thing gets yeah, old. Yeah, who them. knows? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean, things happen at those ages. Yeah. You know, not to any of our kids that we know, but it does. Um, I have a wide ranging variety of kids <laughs> with. You know, the oldest one watches cartoons. The youngest one, like, hey, let's talk about the profit margin of that. I mean, really weird and depth thing. Yeah. And they're all the same brightness. Yep. Just some just care it's to what have they a, choose. Uh, to, yeah, yes. they just want to have a softer life. I did. I did. Let me tell you the story. Let me yep. regale you with the story. So, um, my my daughter said she'd like to go golfing, right? So her and some friends wanted to go golfing. And I was like, okay, well, you know, she's not a great golfer, but a couple of these other girls are on the golf team, but they're all on kind of the developing golf league, right? They're just learning how to play. And they're in ninth grade, right? So I said, okay, let's go. We'll take it to the golf course. And they they played their round. They played nine holes in about two and a half hours in an empty golf course. So it took them a little bit of time, right? But they weren't, no one was waiting for them and they weren't waiting for anybody. They know all the rules relatively and, and, and so on. So this is again, Sunday night. 
After that, she said, hey, it's one of the girls' birthdays. I'd like to take them to dinner. I said, go ahead, you know, get them dinner. And let's. So I come to pick them up at like 9.15 on a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Started at 6 o'clock, 9.15. Actually, started at like 5.30, 9.15, right? On the way home, my daughter turns to me and she goes, I have an unbelievable amount of homework. I said, what? what? <laughs> I said, did you just go to dinner all relaxed, oh, by the way, order dessert. And did you play golf and then dare to hop into the car with me at almost 9.30 on Sunday night and say, oh, my God, I can't believe how much homework I have. I said, you have to be joking me. You cannot be serious. And sure enough, that's exactly what she did. So she got home, cranked out as much homework Boy. as she could, and then woke up the next morning as I jogged her out of bed. Boy, she sounds an awful lot like a guy I know. Oh, really? That is a hundred percent you. Oh yeah, I think that would be. That's a hundred percent. The only you. difference between her and I is when she said, "You know, I have a lot of homework." I'd say, "You know what? I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I have a lot of homework. I'm not doing it. I'm going to have to sweet talk my ninth grade teacher." Um. So, two things that I wanted to share with you, and you being, and I still call you this to this day, but. You being Mr. St. Paul. I still, even though I didn't, no longer live in St. Paul, I still proclaim it's, that I do. It's your city, right? Yeah. It's St. Paul is, is your city. When I order something on Amazon, it still says my address is St. Paul. So there you whatever. Go. Yeah. So we have to talk about the wild. <sighs> and here's why we have to talk about the wild. Mm-hmm. Because there was, I believe it was a Star Tribune uh, article that came out this morning. And, I, and I've been thinking about this for some time because... In my opinion, and I don't really care. I love I love watching yeah, hockey. Yeah. I don't give a damn. You sure. win or lose, I knew they were not were not going to beat the Stars, but whatever. Did you know they were not going to beat them Friday night in that sixth game? I said it on the show. Okay. You know, rookie's doing his rookie bit where he's saying, "Oh no, we have to believe in them." And I'm looking yeah. at him saying, "Dude, they're not." Yeah, Joe was thinking hurt. that they were going to win that one, and, and then I seven. said, "No, they're going to lose Game Six. Yeah. I said that on the show on they Friday. Did. Yeah, so they don't get nearly. Enough heat, in my opinion. They have lost in the first round, what, seven of the last eight times they've been to the playoffs, right? Okay, so let's They're go, the Vikings yeah, of yeah. hockey. Yeah. Well, no, they're not even the Vikings of hockey because at least the Vikings have gotten to the Super Bowl, right? True. So they are the Timberwolves of hockey. Right, but the Timberwolves get a lot more heat than the Wild do. But oh, here's my point. okay, so on a heat point. Okay. Here's my point, though. Yeah. I think the Timberwolves crowd is always reflective of how this town views that team Mm -hmm. accurately. Okay. So you will have a regular season game on a Tuesday against, um, I'm trying to think, uh, against the Washington Wizards. That's maybe going to have eight or 9,000 people there, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you'd have that same Tuesday night game against the Carolina Hurricanes, and the X is packed. Is it because it's in St. Paul? Although it's been packed since day one, even it's when been packed since day yeah, one. Even yeah. though they had that, t- they were anticipating that lull. Then they signed Parisi and Suter, yeah, and then attendance yeah. went through the roof again. So the honeymoon period has essentially been since two thousand. Yeah, and and that's true. I was at Friday's game. I was lucky enough to go to that game. Nice, and uh, you, you know, good for me. So I got to be real passionate about the Wild on the very last game of the year. That's what I really cared about. And there was this <laughs> moron behind me screaming, um, "Oh no, anti-homosexual." Uh, tropes to suitor because he was so mad. And I'm sure Ryan heard him. Yeah, and I'm sure that he was the guy who had a Ryan Suter jersey on 100%. two years ago, yes. and he was in love with Suter, so maybe he was displacing his love for Suter. Now he was mad. But, but I'm like, dude, relax. So, much. They get, so he went to play for a different team for five more million bucks. What would you do? And not to mention, sir, yeah. behind Mike Fredoloni yeah. at the hockey game, you are aware that this team bought him out. Yeah. He yeah, didn't choose to leave. He just, yeah, it, it was just so Even funny. Even though I do hate Suter for what he did to Kaprasov, but that's another story. I mean, those things happen. My point is, with that, that very okay. guy is is two things to me. He represents the exact reason I hate going to sporting mm-hmm, events. Mm-hmm. And that guy is the exact reason of what I'm bringing up. The fact that the Wild just seemingly get a free pass every single time, yeah. every single year even though they haven't advanced in a long time. But here's a franchise that cuts loose two players that hinder their salary cap going Mm -hmm. forward. I'm not saying it wasn't a necessary move. It probably was to improve the room. Yep. Okay, so they do that. Then they have that guy 
go to the team that left you yeah, yeah. 30 years ago yeah. and helps them oust you in the playoffs. Sure. I mean, my God, if this was if this was the Twins, th- could you imagine the the absolute onslaught that that franchise with the cheap pull ads, blah, blah, blah. My God, it would be a completely different okay, tune. Tell me this, because I don't know sports like you do. Okay, I, I believe you are well versed in the art of the well, sports. Plus, you. you're on Monday Night Sports Talk. I mean, you you are on a very popular I'm a big sports deal. Talk. You are a big deal. Do you think it's <laughs> is try and resolve? You don't see a hockey player look crestfallen. They're working infinitely harder than what a basketball player may. When things are going bad with basketball players, you see it in their gait. You see it in their face. Sure. You see it in their their tryhardness. They're not running up and down the court. I mean, your shift in a hockey game is a minute 20 or whatever, right? right. You are sprinting for a minute 20, right? As hard as you can play. Yeah. And, and I, you, in my opinion, hockey players are the toughest people in sports. What did the guy who landed on the uh, goalie skate and had 72 stitches 72 in his stitches face? 72 stitches and he missed it. Well, Erickson period Ack tried to play a game, whatever it was, four, yeah. with a broken leg. With, with a broken leg. Yeah, I mean, think of that. So is it possible that we as Minnesotans, because we're hardy, we look down and we say, they're still trying. They didn't win. And maybe good they point. weren't they weren't great on power plays. Yeah, they, they you know good they had point. all this mm-hmm. and, and maybe their skill set wasn't there, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. But when you watch the Timberwolves play sometimes, or any basketball team, you get to really see the emotions on their face. I have it. Yeah. Especially the people that plunk down the hard earned money and a lot of it mm-hmm. to go to the X and bring their kids or whatever, or go with their it's buddies, expensive. whatever it's Super not expensive. cheap to go to the X. It's because that guy and or gal that does that can relate to the Marcus Foligno because they probably either themselves or have kids that grew up playing hockey. And so Mm -hmm. they understand that mindset, that lifestyle, that whatever it is. Whereas with the professional basketball player, there's not really... Well, there are still I, I still contend that there's just as many basketball fans in this state as there are hockey fans. Oh, yeah. And some of them, like me, are fans of both sports. Yep. Yep. But I think we relate to the hockey lifestyle way more than we do to the basketball lifestyle. You think so? Does that make sense? Yeah, but I don't know if We're that's the state true of hockey. I, but I but I played basketball, not hockey. I mean I think more kids play basketball than they do hockey, don't okay. you think? Well, I yeah, just think we are, the yeah, grander the yeah. the grander Statewide, there's way more people that play basketball than hockey. I would just, think. Just think of it. Yeah, I mean, countrywide for sure. Just think that somebody playing in the NCAA tournament finished the tournament, won or did not win the the tournament, okay. and then now they're playing on playoff hockey teams right now, yeah. like college kids. Yep. Wouldn't that be weird? And that they can actually be good enough, strong enough, talented enough to play on a NH- NHL, right? You know, that's pretty cool. Stanley Cup potential team. I mean, that is unbelievable. You're going from college, and the next day you are. I am a now a pro, multimillionaire pro, <laughs> and I was I was playing literally for the Final Four two oh, weeks ago, four days what, ago, what, whatever it was. I mean, yeah. it's it's shocking. I I have a strange feeling they're not finishing out their classes. <laughs> you know, probably are they, not. Are they just going to say? Or maybe they'll say, <laughs> "Hey, uh, teach." I'll I come need, back this summer. Yeah, I need three weeks off. When we wrap her up. We and need then to see I'll, how long this run yeah. goes. It, 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 one thing that was really cool at the X the other day, Reavers, we got there a little early because the bars were packed. Like the I mean, West it was Seventh a, was hopping. Yeah, West Seventh was hopping. Eagle Street, are you familiar oh, with that yeah. bar? Yeah. That was like basically their last night open because they lost their lease, so they had been there twenty years. And, oh, and, I yeah. didn't know they were shutting their doors. Yeah, so it's already like tearing up. Uh, something new is going to come in there, right? Is it? Don't tell me it's going to be another. Let's build another I condominium I, 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 building. No, I hope it's Cowboy Jacks. That's because I know there's Wild Bills right across the street. I hope it's just one of those cool bars. Okay. But anyways. Everything's passed. The uh, Apostles packed. Uh, Cassetta's packed. Everything's packed. So we go into the stadium way early, right? Games at 8.30, start 8.50, whatever it is. And I go up to order a beer, and I'm thinking, oh, why did we come in here? Why I don't want to drink it. They said, hey, every drink's five bucks. And I said, what? And he goes, happy hour till 8 o'clock. Every drink is five dollars. Oh, there you go. And I looked around, and I went, wait, this just became a really good idea to get in here early, because that was actually super reasonable. And I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. My wife's wines were $5. It was kind of cool. I need to ask a business-related question then. If if Eagle Street, did they did they allow the lease to expire knowing that it wasn't going to be feasible for them to keep their doors open I anymore? I do not know. Because here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay, if you're... 
Mr. Eagle Street. Yeah, Joe Castle. And and you decide, well, this is just isn't worth it for me anymore. Yeah. What's going to make someone else think that you're basically on the only corner in the entire city sure. that's got the amount of traffic however many nights a week that there's stuff going on at yeah, the X. Yeah. If that person can't make it, what makes someone else think well, that they can? Well, it could have just been they wanted to go a different way. I don't know the ins and outs of okay. that. But, you know, you have a lease. I'm just and, curious. And sometimes the landlord says, oh, you were paying 10000 bucks a month. I'm making this number up. But now we want you to pay 20000 uh, And they might have okay. just said, oh, okay, that's not worth it. That's now we're not going to make anymore. anything. But the best part about it is uh, my wife knows the owners of Eagle Street, so we go say hello. And then, we f- and then I was kind of reminded that he has kids that go to my kid's school, oh, right? okay. And then I said to one of my daughters, I said, hey, um, did you know that I was talking to this guy and he has kids? And, and my youngest daughter says, yeah, Addie, my oldest daughter, used to date his son. I said, wait, time out. <laughs> First of all, she's never been on a date in her life. Right. So who are you talking about? And this was way back in grade school. Like when oh, they were little, I was they like, were oh. boyfriend, girlfriend. And then I said, you are not smart enough to mention that, so we could have gone there and maybe gotten free drinks. Or free rings. I mean, uh, I mean just anything. We could have done something, <laughs> but you didn't mention that, like, oh, by the way, although I was at someplace cool the other day, I uh, one of my daughter's friends, they own they own a restaurant, and and I, I don't know them very well, and the restaurant was packed, and I was with my daughter, and I said, um, we, th- this couple was saying, no, you take that seat. And I'm like, absolutely not. You were here first. And they said, no, you know, we're the owners. And I said, oh, okay, well, if it's okay, I'll, I'll take the seat. So we sit down, and then we all find out that we're we're all friends, and I didn't know that that my one of my daughters is best friends with their daughter. And then, of course, they won't accept any money. And you know, it was I was like, no, you don't have to do that. It was very, very sweet wow. of them. But then I had to the, my waiter. I said, I didn't bring any cash. Could you go charge me something so I can so tip I can you tip on my you. credit yeah. card? Because he goes, I'm going to charge you a penny. And I said, okay, do whatever you got to do. But then I had to kind of explain because you know later on in the business they're going to say, wait, why do you have a one penny charge right. with that big tip on it? Big tip. That was me, big tipper. Just right. wanted to make sure you knew that. Just the big tip. Almost, almost twelve percent. Um, funny you mentioned. Five dollar beers yeah, for happy oh, hour. Oh, really? I got this from loyal listener Joe Schneider. Said Reavers, Mike was light years ahead of Bud Light. Oh, he cannot be stumped. I saw this offer from a blog that I follow. I tried to claim the five dollars, but it seems they ran dry already. I'm not a Bud fan because it gives me gas, and there are about a million <laughs> better beers in Minnesota alone. But I take a five buck for a, for a few beer farts. Cheers, Joe. <laughs> they were offering via this blog okay. anyway to Venmo you a five dollar Bud Light voucher. Really? Congrat. Take a bow and a victory that lap. That was pretty cool. So Bud Light was saying, hey, we're going to give you a, a Venmo you a $5 Bud Light voucher? Yes. That is really cool. And what's funny is I saw uh, 26% last week. You know, every week they come out with their new sales okay, data. I forgot to 26% ask you. 26% down last what week What was your still. source? Because John Height and I argued about this, and I can't remember Twitter. if this was on the show or off the Twitter. show. But what, what was the source? Twitter. I, do you think I would ever pay it? First of all, I don't believe anything on Twitter, but I'll quote it. I'll, I'll quote it, right? But I think just about everywhere is showing okay. there is like a weekly beer stat, like they report all the sh- their sales, and it was down 26% the last week. Um, yeah, you can find it. Let me... John I'm confided laughing. that I'm he l- couldn't find it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm laughing because you... Totally pull the Reavers when Joe asks me a question. Yeah. Like, well, Joe, why do you need Twitter. to know the details? Well, I mean, that's different. Okay. So here, five hours ago, this is the new sales drop. Bud Light sales dropped 21%, the New York Post. Okay. So that was that was the week of, I think. The one that I saw was the week of. So that is carrying through for a really long time. If there's a 21% drop in the long run of Bud Light, Bud Light is screwed. Well, and I forget what we were watching, but the, I think we mentioned this last week, but the Pro-America with the horse running in the background. Yes. Budweiser commercial. We are, you know, we are founded. We are, for, I think forged was the usually word. Oh, yeah. We are forged in American spirit. And even my wife, who's oblivious to everything mm-hmm. in a good way. It's not that she's dumb. She just, she doesn't pay attention to a lot of stuff. Sure. And she said, they're laying it on thick. Who are they trying to appeal to? And I said, are you unfamiliar with the story? And she said, what story? 
So, oh, you're kidding. But even she, knowing nothing about what was going Knew on, that it was like, what is she going said, on? Why yeah. are they laying yeah. on so thick? Oh, that's funny that she noticed. Okay, this is the New York Post, <laughs> circa May 2nd to 2023. During the week ended April 22nd, the most recent industry data available, Bud Light sales plunged 21% versus one year ago, accelerating from a 17 point slide a week earlier and the initial drop off of 6%. But the next paragraph says, meanwhile, beer volumes, the number of cases sold, whether in pack, of 6, 12, 18, or 24 dropped an even steeper 26% week over week versus a 21% drop the week earlier. That is unbelievable. If they, I mean, this would be, this would be the most expensive ad campaign in the history of ad campaigns if this thing keeps going the way it is. Well, the thing that I find hilarious about it is there, there was a, a video of, you know, Joe P. America, you know, in his local liquor store saying, look at here, I'm not buying this one. And he goes to the to the Coors Light yep, section yep. and buys a and I, and I want to tell Joe P. America, well, bro, you, you realize they're owned by the same. Are they? I don't even know that. Yeah, they're both owned by InBev. Uh, InBev. Okay, so here, here's a... Which I thought, which I find hilarious, but whatever. But uh, that's okay. That's okay, because I'm not mad at InBev. Right, I'm not mad at Bud Light, really. But even. they ultimately are the ones that are going to suffer, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Bud Light remains the best selling beer in the United States with sales last year topping $4.8 billion. If you're down 20%, that's going to hurt. That's $1 billion All just right. for the fat mathers. By comparison, the number two brand, which is what? You'll never get what the number two brand of beer is in America. This min- is America or worldwide? In America. The number two brand. You'll never guess this. I would never have guessed this beer. The number two brand, and here's 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 the logic I'm going to use. Okay, because I'm going. Okay, if I walk in, what am I seeing the most shelf space devoted to? Logic. And this is a recognizable brand. Yeah, well, sure. Okay, sure, yeah, it's the number two best selling in the, the United States. The number two best selling brand, aside from what uh, you said, Budweiser, or B- Bud Light, Bud Light is the number one at four point eight billion, and then the number two. This is last year's sales. Uh, for the sales of 2022 is going to have to be something obscure, but yet very popular, which is a complete contradiction. I'm realizing oh, that I as like, I'm talking I like this it. Out. I can hear these gears in your brain going, I'm here, going here, to guess here. it's, let's see, worldwide. Oh, it's got to be Corona. Close. Modella Special. Okay, I was going to guess. I would have never <laughs> guessed well, Modella. I only guessed that. Okay, Modella makes 100% sense because... When you're not here, <laughs> sure. for instance, if you're anywhere in the South, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's okay. everywhere. Absolutely so, everywhere. Uh, just to finish this line, it says, by comparison, the number two brand, Modelo, sold $3.75 billion. So hypothetically, wow. Modelo might take over the first spot if Bud Light really has a 26% drop, while Michelob Ultra, owned by InBev, the same people, right, yep. is $3.3 billion in sales. That's the third. That's according to Williams, Connecticut-based research firm. Um, that is really, really interesting. What if wow. Bud Light gets knocked off the top and... They and Modelo becomes the best selling Modelo, which I think is a Spanish beer. Yes. Right? It becomes the number one best selling beer in America. How cool would that be? Won't be surprising at yeah. all. Will it? Yeah. I mean, not, not to me. Another line. I think it runs the risk of losing that number one position to, at the end of the calendar year to Modelo Especial Williams thinks. Wow, that's crazy. Wow, that as I read this, that is just crazy. Just because they wanted to do a little bit of a different marketing campaign. And this poor lady that um, is this Alyssa Heinerscheid, the the Bud Light marketing executive? That the one that got gassed. The one that got canned. Yeah. I mean, Melissa. It is kind of funny. I mean, I get that I could market to men and I could market to women, right? Maybe I could understand paint colors and I could market to both men and women. But Bud Light to say, hey, Bud Light is almost exclusively drank drunk drunked by men. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. And it would be kind of interesting to say. Well, is that, should we have, okay, let me ask you this. All right. If you're in charge of a marketing department, should you be most like the prototypical drinker of that product or user of that product? Or can you be someone totally damn gentle like this gal who maybe doesn't drink Bud Light, right? But maybe off, she's a wine but, drinker. But it's bringing a completely different perspective to the table. But is it the one that makes sense? No. Right? See, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, but so, okay, so the, the well, people I, I, who sell that. Porsches, should they only be middle-aged, balding white guys who buy Porsches? Well, let me rephrase that because a couple of years ago, I worked for a company, and this was before I came to work for Hubbard, but I worked for a company 
that specialized in um, shipping. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I remember when I got the job, one of the requirements was because I was in a supervision supervisor lead role, which I know insert joke there. Reavers is in charge of people. I know <laughs> that's that's all funny. But one of the reasons that you came to the table was because you saw something that we're doing with a complete fresh set of okay. eyes, right? right? Where they got set in their ways of saying, well, this is just the way we do things. Well, no, this he's got a good point here. Why do we do th- you know You know what I'm saying? So that, in some cases, can be good for a company. Devil's advocate. Yes. The, so, well, let, let me be another devil's advocate to your point. All right. The Beef Council of the United States, <laughs> should they hire a vegan? Because I'd say, no. oh, you don't know beef. Right. So this gal, you, you don't drink Bud Light. You might not be a light beer drinker. You don't know your audience. You might not know your audience. Right. right? You could drink Bud Light, but, but you might just not do it. I mean, that's, and I'm not here to pigeonhole people out of their jobs, no. right? That's not my goal. But now that I take it to the extremes, I think, huh, maybe you shouldn't be a vegan and trying to sell for the Beef Council of America. Yeah. I don't even know if there's such a thing as a Beef Council of America. Can I share with you something that was just sent in by Please. a loyal listener, Terry? Please. Because I love, I love giving these to you. This one's called The Coyote Principle, and I'm going to rip and read this okay, okay. because I know it's going to be good. And if it's not, I can just delete it from the show when I post it anyway. <laughs> right. The Coyote Principle, California. <clears throat> the governor of California is jogging with his dog along a nature trail. A coyote jumps out and attacks the governor's dog, killing it, then bites the governor. Oof. The governor starts to intervene but reflects upon the movie Bambi and then realizes he should stop because the coyote's only doing what is natural. He calls animal control. Animal control captures the coyote and bills the state $200 testing for its diseases and $500 for relocating it. He calls a veterinarian. The vet collects the dead dog and bills the state $200 testing it for diseases. The governor goes to the hospital, spends $3,500 getting checked for diseases from the coyote and on getting his bite wound bandaged. The running trail gets shut down for six months while Fish and Game conducts a $100,000 survey to make sure the area is now free of dangerous animals. The governor spends $50,000 in state funds implementing a coyote awareness program for residents of the area. The state legislature spends $2 million to study how to better treat rabies and how to permanently eradicate the disease throughout the world. The governor's security agent is fired for not stopping the attack. The state spends $150,000 to hire and train a new agent with additional special (laughs) training on the nature of coyotes. PETA protests the coyotes' relocation and files a $5 million suit against the state. Now, let's go to Texas. The governor of Texas is in a wheelchair with his dog along a nature trail. A coyote jumps out and attacks his dog. Well, the governor shoots the coyote with a state-issued pistol and keeps on rolling. The governor has spent 50 cents on a 45 ACP hollow point cartridge. The buzzers eat the dead coyote. The end. The end. You know, it was kind and that, of funny. And that, my friends, is why California is broke and Texas I, is not. Honest to God, I think you could find an example of almost that exact thing happening. Yeah. I don't know if that seems it, it, it sounds Babylon B ish, where but you're like, oh, wait, is that true? Well, reality is putting the Babylon B out of business. Oh, I, I, that would be a really interesting, fun thing to do. See if we could find those examples. And finally, here before we go, Mike's thoughts on paid Minnesota leave for all. Oh, I'm yes, kidding. Yes. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I love it. Do the only reason do. I said that yeah. is because Joe wanted me to ask you about that, and I said, Joe, are you out of your mind, Mike? First of all, you you didn't even really know what to, what was going no, on. We anyway. already offer such great benefits, and I and I'm thinking, no, I'm not going to ask Mike yeah. about that. Go do your, you know, go bug somebody else. Well, thank you, Reavers, for not asking me, and you are the best. Please do us a favor and rate and review the show wherever you happen to be listening to the Weekly Scramble. We would appreciate it. His name is Mike Fredoloni. My name is Chris Reavers. We'll talk to you again next week. Until then, cheers. Hey guys, feel like it's harder to get in shape and stay in shape? Well, our new sponsor, Nugenics Total Tea, is offering a complimentary bottle when you text 231-231 and enter the keyword garage. Hey, I get it. You get older and your body changes. And I got tired of personally having the dad bod. If you're feeling a little less like your old self, you don't have to. You don't have as much time to work out anymore, but you want that energy and you want the body you once had. Well, that's when I discovered Nugenics Total Tea and I felt revived. Working out like I used 
used to. If you want more energy to counter the negative physical effects of aging, Nugenics Total T Testosterone Booster with Testafin is going to help you turn back the clock. It's going to re-energize your workouts, and you will get better results at the gym, and it's going to help you look and feel like the man that you really want to be. Now, here's the difference. Nugenics Total T contains man-boosting key ingredients like Testafin. It has been validated in five clinical studies shown to boost free testosterone levels in men. While every product professes quality, many other products use generic ingredients that are often far less than clinical grade. With Nugenics Total T, you get the same clinical potency levels used in the trials. And Nugenics's formulation is backed by 10 years of science and research. Nugenics Total T is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. And Nugenics Total T can help re-energize your life and help you get back the powerful, confident, good-looking warrior that you used to be. Now, get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text 231231 and enter the keyword garage. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermal, their most powerful fat incinerator ever, with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. Text 231231 and enter the keyword garage. Text 231231 and enter the keyword garage. Texting enrolls you into recurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply.